Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Propaganda Casadenda with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Additional Things. And off here today, I'm going to talk about, you know, we all had one yesterday, but there's a sort of topic that kept popping up. That's the end of the Pacific Theatre. Oh, it'll be so much better there. And that's where I think it's actually quite wrong. If anything, the Pacific Theatre is probably the worst theatre they could ever conceivably choose. In fact, they're better off going back to Normandy for 1940, of Communist Free than the Pacific Theatre. And you might ask, why is that? Well, there's also just a bit of a caveat. We're not just likely to see it because Sega is a Japanese company. The Japanese are not particularly keen on talking about World War Two. For starters, like, they're really, really not keen on talking about it. Like, you know, they might have done some really terrible things and they're not too keen on talking about that. So, generally, as a rule of thumb, they're this kind of, kind of like a stopping point, like... We're probably not going to see anything there just for starters. But even then, like, it rather hinges on the notion, like, that the Imperial Japanese Army would be interesting, that the Pacific Theatre is in a combat, you know, ground combat scenario, it would be interesting. And here's the thing, like, the Pacific Theatre was largely, you know, naval and aerial theatre, you know, ships and aircraft. Like, that was primarily where it went. That is primarily where the Japanese spent most of the resources. The Army, in comparison, was really underfunded, and did not get any as good quality equipment or troops or anything else compared to the Air Force and the Navy. So, I mean, already they're just, you know, there's going to be some things that we just, you know, the picture doesn't quite add up for a full, you know, company for the experience in the Pacific Theater. And that's really the fact that the Imperial Japanese Army was not very good. In fact, if we were to compare it with, you know, any of the European armies, it would probably be forming under those. I mean, we're talking even the Italians and the Romanians. And this is in large part because the Imperial Japanese Army did not fight in World War One. In fact, the wars had fought in large, you know, were sort of a bit colonial stuff. Well, it sort of fought, but, you know, not in Europe. Not where all the artillery happened, where all the stuff that the actual required tanks, such, you know, all the knowledge gained from it pretty much just never happened for the Japanese. In fact, they then proceeded to you know, fight the Chinese, which was rather than just, you know, beating up a bunch of peasants for the most part, who weren't really able to resist them. And then the Japanese were sort of at times struggling. You know, they were just... You know, involving so much strategy, you know, pushing a lot of troops here and there, but there's never really any sort of growth within the army because of that. I mean, they apparently had some pretty neat tanks before the war began, but you know, that quickly stopped. And more important, they couldn't really keep producing them, support them. So even then, they didn't have a lot of tanks for starters. But really, one of the big differences here, like in terms of artillery, the Imperial Japanese Army is completely underfunded, completely underequipped. Like there's barely any artillery compared to any of the other armies. It just had nothing there. Anti tank weapons, barely existent. Anti aircraft weapons, barely existent. Transports, again, not really much to ride them. I mean, they just really, really under equipped in the Imperial Japanese Army. Toss in the fact the Imperial Japanese Army, like the Italian Army, did not put a particularly large amount of faith in training, mostly just for line of discipline. And, you know, you're there sort of beginning to you know, see issues appearing. Like, it just wasn't a great army. The officer corps had issues with actual just sticking to orders and not just going bonsai or something uh, similarly silly. So, I mean, the Imperial Japanese Army just wasn't a very good army. I mean, compared with the Imperial or the Royal Italian Army, and like the Italian Army would have been much better because, for starters, it had better equipment. And I'm reasonably sure to a certain degree they at least had slightly better training, just the better equipment they had actual artillery to rely on, anti aircraft weapons, anti tank weapons, and even then they could bear borrow from the Germans. Like, they had a lot more better things to work with. And then, of course, like, they weren't fighting a huge naval war either. So, I mean, you know, they could at least slightly better support their army, though, of course, equipment wise, the Italians were still struggling. Heavily. I mean, hell, even the Romanians, you know, with largely a World War One era army, were probably able to do better because they still had a lot more artillery. And they, of course, got trounced at Stalingrad. And now the t Japanese got trounced in Manchuria. Like, they got completely rolled over by the Russians. Like, they stood no chance at all. Like, it was just a complete and utter beatdown they received in Manchuria. I mean, the only reason the you know, Pacific keeps appearing is because it's sort of like, you know, the American wet dream. They get to beat up some non-Europeans, be a bit racist about it, and they can't really resist. Like, I mean, that's probably in large part why the Pacific Theatre gets so much attention. Oh, it looks exotic. It's got, I don't know, palm trees and non-white people. And, I mean... It's just not a very good theatre, again, for a lot of the reasons I just mentioned. 
it's just not very good and there's not really much you can do there after it's like alright you do the Americans you do the Japanese uh, what, what then like I mean it just really falls flat there's not really much territory that you can go on within the Pacific theater it's very limited beyond already what is heavily limited in what was a theater was largely determined by naval forces and aircraft again it was very much not a ground combat theater that was Europe that was very much Europe so I mean you're just sort of looking at a theater which just isn't particularly suited for company of heroes it's I mean you might as well I don't know try and do the hundred years war in company of heroes I mean you probably wouldn't get an amazing result out of that either but in some ways you probably would get better results than you know the Imperial Japanese army in the Pacific theater so, I mean, overall, it just isn't going to work out, I think. And you're just much better sticking to, like, Italy, which... I mean, you know, people say, like, oh, I'm so tired of the Western theatre. Have you ever been to Italy? Like, no. I mean, you know, it's just... Like, even though it's just mostly people sick and tired of Norman, even then, that's because Normandy's just been done so absolutely poorly and so very, you know, myopic. But, like, there's still so much of Europe that can be explored. It'd still be interesting. still be novel, to be honest. And it would be a lot more interesting than, you know, the Pacific theatre ever could possibly imagine itself to be. I mean, I mean, personally, just absolutely no interest either in it. I mean, if they ever, like, go company street, it's the Pacific Theatre, be like, all right, A, if we're going to get modding supports so and get, you know, the European Theatre somehow stuffed into it, and when's company is for? Because I have absolutely no interest in the Pacific Theatre. Like, that would be my two questions to Relic right then and there. And also, did you actually learn anything from Dawn of War 3? Because if you go for the Pacific Theatre after all the surveys, I, I even listening. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a minority that wants the Pacific Theatre, to be honest. Like, it just doesn't have anything to offer. So, again, my apologies here, you know, for all the dreams of Pacific glory I'm tram tramping upon with my evil Danish jackboots. But I just really cannot see the Pacific Theatre in any conceivable way being interesting or fun. Or even just viable as a game. Because, again, the Imperial Japanese Army, and I really cannot stress this enough, is just poorly trained and poorly equipped probably even poorly organized if they're going to be fair about it as well so there's just not really much there to, you know to grab onto not much to actually work with and it just i feel would be a really really bad idea by relic if they were to visit it again italy would be much better germany 1945 would be better normandy 1944 again would be better company of wolfensteins you know any just sort of imaginary scenario that evolves into somehow weird things or, you know, somehow the Germans, you know, going into the, I don't know, ceasefire and you somehow the war starting up again. I mean, that would be a lot better as well. But just the Pacific Theatre, no, just no. Absolutely no. So there we go. Again, I'm probably going to, you know, again, upset some people who just, you know, really were set on the Pacific Theatre, but... It's not going to happen, and it should not happen. It's one of those things that, you know, no. Just no. So this is Imperial Nain signing off. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you agreed with it. If you did, you know, subscribe, like, share, comment on it. And, of course, if you'd like to do, do consider donating or pledging on Patreon. Links in the video description. This is Imperial Nain saying cheers. Thank you for watching. See you all another time for another video. Cheers.